Hey, everybody, Steve Rosenbaum here coming at you from Austin, Texas. How's everybody doing today? Uh, I'm very excited that I will be joining you each and every Tuesday at this time for sales training. And not just any sales training. My goal is to help make it really, really easy for you to get new clients and make them last a long, long time. Now, I've been in sales for a long, long time, and I've trained a lot of people. First, nearly three decades in the corporate world, where I was a sales executive and also a marketing executive with many companies, large and small, all different fields. And I've trained and I've mentored and I've coached thousands of people, both in the corporate world and also once I left the corporate world and went out on my own through my online teaching, my coaching, my courses, my mentoring, and so forth. So I'm very excited to join up with Extendly with that one goal, help you get more clients. Now, also, like you, I'm a go high level agency owner. My agency is called Flawless Follow Up, but I want to let you know about how I'm going to market and what's making me different because that's what's going to help you land more clients is what differentiates you, what makes you the only logical solution. So that's what we're going to be talking about each and every week. So uh, I've actually done a, a few trainings in the past several weeks. You'll probably find those recordings in the uh, Extendly group if you've missed them. But today, let me get my presentation ready. Let's pull it up on the screen. And I'll share my screen and turn off my camera. All right, let me go over here and share my screen. All right, that should do it. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera as well. Or am I? There we go. Okay, there we go. So today, let's talk about scaling your business maximizing your success and taking your agency to the next level. How's that sound? Pretty good? All right. Now, I am not able to watch the chat, but what I'll do is I will circle back after the discussion and answer any questions. So feel free to put any questions in the chat. I'll circle back after the presentation, after I close down the uh, the Zoom call here, and uh, I'll interact in the uh, in the group. Now, the first thing that's important about your agency, and before we even think about scaling is we need to make sure that we've got something that's working, right? We need to make sure that we've got that strong foundation because if we scale a bad system, what's going to happen? We're only going to get chaos, right? So we got to make sure that we've got the proven processes at work. And when I say a proven process, I just don't mean a proven process that somebody tells you is a proven process. I mean, it's something that you've been able to go out and have success with. You've been able to replicate it, make it your own, and you know that you can consistently deliver and on your promises, right? And make sure that your customer is getting a phenomenal experience. Once you have that down, then we can start thinking about scaling. But don't try to scale too fast, okay? Don't sit in your office making your world domination plans before you've actually gone out and done some of this and know what it's like. Know where are the weak links? Where are the chinks in the armor that you're going to have to work out? Next, you want to make sure you've got a team in place. Now, I've got my camera off, but I'm actually raising my hand because I told you I'm an agency owner like you. And even though I've got all this gray hair, which comes with all this wisdom and all these years of experience, guess what? I made some mistakes. Although I was with somebody this morning who's uh, you know, you know, a friend of mine and also got lots of experiences. Oh, no, you didn't make some mistakes. You found out successfully some ways not to do some things, okay? You made progress. All of that's true, all right? Now, that being said, I'd like to save you from making those same mistakes, right? One of the biggest mistakes I made was trying to do a lot myself, not putting a team in place, all right? Now, I will tell you that one of the best things you could do to get a team in place is hire Extendly. This is where they're phenomenal. This is where they've got the resources. This is their job is to be your team. And today, when we talk about onboarding, when we talk about support, I was on a call today and the, the client said to me, what is your onboarding system look like? Because that is the most important thing of all to me. And I could raise my hand with 100% with confidence to say, man, we've got a perfect onboarding system. And you know how I know? Because I use Extendly. So I'm not just pitching for them. I'm letting you know that this was where, this is one of the, the problems I had when I launched my agency was I tried to onboard people myself. And that was a problem in two ways. Number one is because 
That's not what my skill set is. Whereas that is where Extendly has trained some people to be fantastic at that. But here's the second problem. And it actually is bullet number three. Sales is sales. What do I mean by that? The sales is where the revenue comes in. The sales is what keeps the lights on, but also allows you to grow. And if you are your best salesperson, that's the case with me. Okay. I'm, I'm a great salesperson. All right. So the problem is if I'm onboarding somebody, guess what I'm not doing? I'm not selling, right? And if I'm not selling, that means we're not earning new revenue. That means we're not growing. So why not outsource the onboarding to somebody who's really, really good at it? And that's their full-time job so that you can now concentrate 100% of your efforts to what you're best at, in my case, selling. And the other thing I'll say about sales is sales, is that if sales is not your bag, if that's not your thing, then find somebody that loves to do it, all right? Because that, you need to keep that revenue coming in. And again, I was very candid with you. I was very transparent. You'll always find that with me. I let you know, I had some issues when I first lost, lost my agency. And what happened was I ran into some revenue problems. Guess what? Part of the reason was because I was doing things that I could outsource things to, outsource people, you know, put that team in place, hire extendly. Hire some people that are great at certain things and focus on sales. And if you're not the salesperson, get a salesperson who could focus on sales. Have a strong gateway product. What do I mean by a gateway product? Well, high level is not a gateway product. High level is an enterprise solution. It's massive. Okay, it's huge. If you try to sell the system as a whole, you're going to run into difficulty. You're going to confuse a lot of people. And if you try to wing it and try to figure out, well, I'll just take the, the part that works for one person and I'll sell it to them, that's an improvement. It's still not as good as having a gateway product. A gateway product is going to market and say, we do this. Now, I've seen lots of people in the, in the high-level community and they, maybe they focus on getting more reviews for somebody. Maybe they focus on uh, putting chat widgets on, on their websites, or maybe they focus on the, uh, the pipeline, right? Or the calendar or reactivation. Those, are all, those could all be gateway products. Start by going to market with that. Then you're only talking about one thing. You could focus on that. You can go to somebody and say, this is what we do. We help you get more reviews so that you get more repeat business, more word of mouth, more people telling the, you know, spreading the word and making referrals to friends and family. If you do that, now you're different than everybody else that's out there saying, I'm a marketer, I'm a marketer, I'm a marketer. You're focusing on one thing. And I know this, there is no shortage of companies that need more reviews out there. I've got a prospect right now that I'm hoping to turn into a client. This is somebody that is in the home services business in a major metropolitan area. They've been around 60 years. They've got dozens and dozens of trucks on the road. They're on TV advertising. They're all over the place. They are probably the biggest and longest running service provider for what they do in that particular city. You would think that if you Googled them, they'd come up number one. At least they'd come up in the three pack. Guess what? They come up number 43. Number 43. You know what I think the biggest reason is? They've got 39 reviews. They've been around 60 years. They've got 39 reviews. And then somebody who's much smaller than they are, who hasn't been around nearly as much as, they, as long as they have, they've got over 2,500 reviews. Guess where they are? They're in the three pack. So this prospect looks at me and says, how come we're so far down in the Google search? Like, you need more reviews. Can you help us with that? Absolutely, we can help you with that. We have a gateway product for that. Now, the thing about the gateway product is, once they get in and they, and they have success, they're going to want more, aren't they? We'll talk about that on another slide. All right, let me get a sip of water here. How are we doing? I keep forgetting. I can't see the chat right now. If you have comments, questions, feedback, put in the chat. I will circle back and address it after the presentation here. All right, now, retention 
is the key to success. And the opposite of retention is what we call churn, okay? Churn kills. You know the excitement of getting somebody to sign up, right? Somebody signs up. And when it starts happening automatically, that's even better. Hey, you got a new sign up, got a new sign up. And you, every, you, you, you can feel your monthly recurring revenue growing, MRR. That's what we want, MRR, monthly recurring revenue. You feel it growing each and every month. But guess what? Then you lose a couple. Maybe you lose a couple more, all right? We need to minimize churn as much as, as possible. All right, now, why do I have Gateway product here? I think that was on my last slide, right? All right. I don't believe that should be there. I think we've talked about it, so I'm going to skip it, all right? But here's probably why I, lead, well, why I had that there, was because I do want to talk about helping people get fast success. So if you have a Gateway product, like helping somebody get reviews, we know that we can get people more reviews very, very quickly, right? Especially we could send out a text message. We could probably start getting them more reviews that very afternoon, can't we? As soon as we hook up the review snapshot, as soon as we hook up the workflow, we know that we could push a button, we could start getting them more reviews like that. That kind of fast success is what they're going to fall in love with. And the cool thing about that is, and this is why I have Gateway product there, is if we go out and we use that gateway product, we say, we're going to focus on one thing. We're going to get you more reviews. And then you go out and you do it. You do it faster than they've ever seen it before. And they see the conversation manager lighting up. They see people coming in. This is what happens. I know because these are, these are what my clients say to me. Like, I've never seen anything like that conversation manager where I know instantly when somebody got your message and they're responding and I can connect with them from all the different channels. And they love that. That's the fast success you want them to see. Guess what now? You've just opened up another opportunity because in providing the solution to their first problem, you've created another problem. What's that problem? That problem is, well, now they got a whole lot of people they have to follow up with. Now, guess what? They're going to need more functions in high level. Maybe they're going to need workflows and automation. Maybe they're going to need the CRM. So if you start with a gateway product, a strip down, and you show them fast success, and you solve the problem they're having, like not enough reviews. As soon as you solve that problem, provide the solution, you open up another problem, opportunity. Think of the wheel, right? Think of it. I'm, I'm drawing a circle with my hands as I'm talking to you right now. Think of it. We got, we got a problem on the left. We got a solution on the right. And we got, we got a circle, an arrow that goes from problem to solution. But then that circle continues with another arrow goes from solution to problem. We're creating an endless cycle, problem, solution, problem, solution, problem, solution. What do we call that? We call that growth. Every solution raises their success, but it creates another problem slash opportunity. When you solve that, guess what? You're going to open up another problem slash opportunity, but it's going to be at an even higher level. That's your growth. Show them that success. Start with the low tier gateway product. Show them that success. Think of that circle. Think of that endless circle. Problem, solution, problem, solution. You're in the middle, the catalyst to make that all happen. And that is growth for your client. That's when they'll stay with you a long, long time. I've got clients that have been with me for over 13 years. Obviously, long before I was in high level, because high level didn't exist 13 years ago, did it? Okay. But by creating this growth, by solving a problem and opening the door to another opportunity, this is how we grow. And now my client will tell me, I can't get rid of you. I'm unfireable. He can't fire me. I am unfireable. I'd like to make you unfireable. I want you to get those clients and then I want to make you unfireable. Do that by getting your foot in the door with a gateway product, show them success, and then show them growth. Make sense? So after the success, we upsell. You know what else we do? And I should have put that on the slide. You know what else we do immediately after we get success? It's not on the slide. What do you think I'm going to say? Get a testimonial right away. That's the best time. When somebody sees that success and they say, oh, wow, he got me more reviews in an afternoon than I've ever gotten in my life. That's a phenomenal testimonial. Take out your iPhone. Get, it, get them on video saying that about you. So you've got these testimonials. What's the next thing you ask for? Referrals, right? Referrals, exactly. All right. Now, here's one of my favorite topics to talk about. Follow-up. 
My company's called Flawless Follow-Up. That's what I do better than anybody else in the world. All right? But who do you follow up with? You need to have a list. I run into businesses all over town, all over the world, really. And it's amazing. They don't have a list and they don't have a process in place for continually building that list. Now, you're in the business of helping people build their list, but you need to make sure that you're doing the same thing. You need to make sure that each and every person that contacts you, they get on your list and you follow up. And do you know why? Because studies have shown that only 3% of any marketplace are ready, willing, and able to buy from you right now. RWA, you'll hear that from me a lot, all right? RWA, ready, willing, and able. Now, you need those three things. You need those three things. Somebody has to be ready, willing, and able to hire you. That's when a sale happens. It's a matter of timing. You could also say it's when the right message hits the right person at the right time. All right. All three things have to come into alignment for a sale to happen. So the fact that you want to go out and you want to sell something doesn't mean you're going to make a sale. That person might be ready. They might be willing. They may not be able. Maybe they don't have the money. Maybe they've got another, uh, maybe they've got another platform that they're trying to get rid of or trying to phase out of. Maybe they've got somebody in their organization that's opposed to it for some reason. They might be ready and willing and not able. They might be ready and able and not willing, right? Could be any of the three, but you got to have all three. So the thing is this, only 3% of any marketplace, and this has, been, this has been proven in study after study after study, Chet Holmes talks about it in one of his sales books, only 3% of any marketplace right now. So think about that. Think about 100 people in a room, only three of them are ready, willing, and able to buy right now. So all the time that you're spending trying to convince people that you meet, chances are 97 out of 100 times, those people, they're not going to buy from you today. There used to be a saying that a great salesman could sell ice to an Eskimo. I think only a jerk would try to sell ice to an Eskimo. Why would you try to sell something to somebody if they're not ready, willing, and able? All right. Instead, your job is to be there, is to earn the top of mind presence. It is to, number one, stop selling. Stop selling. Because 97% of the people that you're talking to, they're not ready to buy. And when you sell, it doesn't look pretty, does it? But there's a better way. I call it the three E's. It's education, it's entertainment, and it's engagement. When you, can, when you communicate with people, whether you do it in person, whether you do it on social media, whether you do it by email, whatever you're doing, you could educate, you could entertain, you could engage people. Now, when people are ready, willing, and able, who are they going to call? They're going to call you. You've established yourself as the expert. You've, you've given to them first. You've earned reciprocity. This is what you see me doing right now. I'm educating. Maybe I'm entertaining you, hopefully. If you write a chat on Facebook, you'll be engaging with me. I'm demonstrating the three E's. The three E's. I'm not trying to sell you. But if you want to buy from me, it's okay. Because now you know me. Now you like me. Now you trust me. Now I've demonstrated my authority and my credibility. If not in the first 10 minutes, and over time, when you see me here each and every week. When you see me time and time again in the Extendly community. You already know as Extendly has put me on their coaching roster, right? That I must have some authority and credibility. So I've gotten that third party transfer of credibility because you already know and like and trust Extendly. You're probably one of their clients. And if you're not, you should be. And because of that, if they tell you you should listen to me from training, it gives a whole lot more credence than if I tell you that you should listen to me, right? Exactly. So three E's, remember that. Education, entertainment, and engagement. Stop selling. And when you do this, you naturally outlast the competition. You know why? Because your competition doesn't follow up. Because they stink at follow up. Because some of those same studies show that most people, they hardly follow up one time. They more rarely follow up twice. They almost never follow up three times. And if you do this consistently, 
Recency and frequency wins the battle. Recency and frequency. The good news is we can automate a lot of that and we can still be sincere even through automation. So when you do that, you outlast the competition. So when somebody does decide they're ready, willing, and able to buy, guess what? You're the only logical solution. You've earned that top of mind presence. You're the one they remember. You're the one that's right there in their inbox. You're the one that's demonstrated your credibility. You've earned their trust. They know you, they like you, they trust you, all the above. How's that sound? Make sense? All right, folks, let me get a sip of water here. Let me check the time. How are we doing on time? We're doing fine, right? Absolutely. Please do put those comments, feedback, that a boys, whatever you want to put. Engage with me in the comment area. When I'm done, I'll go back and return the favor. All right. So we talked about building your list and follow up. So what's next? I always get asked this. How do you get how do you get traffic? How do you get more people? All right. Referrals, folks. Referrals are the absolute best way to get traffic. And again, you've seen that as a demonstration, what I just talked about not 15 seconds ago, right? Because 20 minutes ago, you may not have known who I was. A lot of people do, but you might not have. But then Extendly says, meet Steve Rosenbaum. He's a great sales coach. He's going to be with you each and every week. Now, what do you think of me? You hardly knew me 20 minutes ago, but already you know. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to sales. You already know the people that you put, you hold in high regard, that they hold me in high regard. And so I get that transfer, right? Referrals is very, very powerful. Studies are out there, the power of referrals. It's incredible what that does. See, when most people get a referral, let me, let me put that another way. When most people go out and they're trying to make a decision, one of the first things they do is look at referrals. Now, you know that, right? You know that from selling reviews. You know that from, you, you know, you're talking to a, a, a local restaurant and you say, hey, most people, they check the reviews on Yelp, on Google before they go and decide where they're going to eat. Well, that's true. But it's also true if somebody wants to hire a digital marketing agency. They're going to talk to people they know. Hey, who do you know that can help us? Do you know a great agency that could help us? And they're going to trust those referrals. The other great thing about referrals is, number one, they're a whole lot easier for you to convert them into a sale. They convert a whole lot quicker. They stay with you a whole lot longer. And one of that is almost, don't want to say a feeling of guilt, but one of that is, think about this. If you get referred to somebody you do business with, sometimes you might feel a little guilty about, Stopping doing business with them, right? How's that going to make you look to your friend? See, that's, that works on people subliminally. And that's why the churn rate goes down. When, when you get people that are referred to you, believe it or not, the churn rate goes down. And here's another very interesting thing about when people are referred to you. People that are referred to you to do business, they are more likely to also refer people. So think about that. The power of referrals. Easier to close. They stay with you longer. The churn rate goes down. They refer other people, and there's many, many more advantages. So referrals, the best, you've heard it, word of mouth, the best form of advertising. How can you make sure you get more referrals? Talked about a few slides ago, by the way, when you show somebody fast success, you ask for that testimonial, ask for a referral. Hey, by the way, do you know somebody else that would like me to improve the reviews? Get that referral. Make sense? Okay. OPT. Do you know what I'm talking about when I talk about OPT? Any guesses? Other people's what? Other people's traffic. One of the quickest ways, one of the quickest ways for you to get traction in any new group is to get introduced to that group by somebody who's already there, somebody that's already having success. I'm doing this locally. Okay, I'm doing this locally in my hometown of Austin, Texas, where not a lot of people, right? I mean, I've got I've got clients everywhere, but believe it or not, not as many in Austin, Texas, and I want to have more presence in Austin, Texas. Now, I 
am not going to go door to door in Austin, Texas, trying to hire people. That's not what I do. I do other things that are more important to my company. So what I did was I partnered with somebody. I partnered with somebody is already doing a lot of business with a lot of business with a lot of businesses in Austin, Texas. All right. In this case, he was a well, without tipping it too much, I'll just say he sells a printed product. All right. That a lot of people in town use, hundreds of people. And I happen to go hand in hand. I I, I absolutely compliment his product. And so I said, look, you're in there. You're talking to these people. Why don't you refer me to these people and I'll pay you a commission? Now, instead of me knocking on a door cold, telling them, hey, flawless follow-up is the best thing in the world, I've got somebody they already know, like, and trust that is telling them what? To tell them, hey, flawless follow-up is the best thing in the world. But it has a whole lot more credibility when he says it than when I say it, because I am flawless follow-up. Of course, I'm going to tell you it's the best thing in the world. But when a third party tells you that, the third party credibility, it has so much more credibility. So that's how it works. Other people's traffic. Now, I don't have to go out and find that traffic. That person is going to bring it to me. I also do this online. I do this online by going on podcasts, by speaking on uh, at events, virtual events and seminars and live events on the stage. These are all places that I get put in front of a whole lot of people. I get introduced as an expert. And right away, I'm able to tap into OPT, other people's traffic. It's the best way. It's the fastest way. I, I say it's free. You'll probably have to pay an affiliate commission, but you're going to pay that based on sales. So you're not going to pay for it up front, right? Something very, very similar are JV partners. All right. So it's, it is it is similar. Okay. So I, I talked to you about a JV partner that I partnered with this guy. He's got a printed product. You could do the same. Who do you have in town that has a lot of businesses as clients? Maybe CPAs, maybe accountants, maybe attorneys, maybe television stations, maybe newspapers, maybe magazines, maybe printers, all the above. Partner with those people. They're already doing business with these people and they need your products. Think of a gateway product that you can go to market with. Podcasts and blogs, I mentioned that. I do it all the time. You should do it. You get introduced to people right away and they know that you're the expert. So find the influencers in the niches that you want to get into and get on their podcast. It's not hard. They're always looking for guests. Get on their blog. Not hard. They're always looking for content. Local meetups. If you're doing business locally, attend local meetups. Let's talk a little bit more about the power of referrals. And you know what? I think I gave you a lot of these stats already. So I forgot I had a slide in here. So we'll just go through this one quickly. Number one, they convert higher, up to 30% higher conversion rate. They have a higher profit margin. Well, why? Because you don't have to advertise for them. They close very, very quickly, so they're highly profitable. They're 18% less likely to churn, and they're four times more likely to refer others. Those are all the reasons why referrals are so, so powerful. What can you do to get yourself more referrals? That's going to help you scale your business very, very quickly. Let's talk a little bit about social media. Everybody loves social media. Everybody loves to make those short little stories and videos and content and post it out there. Heck, I do it too, right? But here's the thing you have to remember about social media. You own nothing on social media. You are a guest. You and I, we all know people that have had their accounts shut down unknowingly. You never know why. They don't tell you why. It's just all of a sudden, whoops, my account's gone. Well, not mine. I haven't had it done. But we know people who have. We don't always know why. I do know one one guy, one guy I know who had 50,000 people in a group. Think about that, 50,000 people in a group. And he estimated, based on his sales, that each one of those people were worth about $5. Okay, he generated about two hundred fifty thousand dollars from those fifty thousand people in his group, and then one day it was a Facebook group, by the way. One day, he woke up and it was gone, 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 gone. Not not a word, nothing. See, the problem was he accidentally, unknowingly, 
He made a mistake. He did. It was his fault. He made a mistake. You see, what he did was he was in the real estate market and he was actually a realtor, which by the way, realtor, realtor is a trademark name. Did you know that? Did you know that a realtor is a trademark? And he had named his group something like the, the realtor referral group or something like that. And he built a group of 50,000 people, 50,000 realtors, but he used a trademark name. Somebody complained about that. There was no, you know, there, there was no court. There was no, uh, you know, jury. There was nobody to plead the argument to. There was just, sorry, your account's gone. His whole, his whole Facebook account, by the way, everything gone, gone. 50,000 people, boom, $250,000, gone. You own nothing on social media. So use social media wisely. Use it to get in front of as many people as you can. Then what do you do? What do you do as soon as somebody sees you on social media? What should you do? Hint, we referred to it in an earlier slide. What should we do as soon as we meet somebody on social media? We should capture the lead. Remember the slide? Build your list and follow up. Use social media. Absolutely, use it. And as fast as you can, get those people on your own list because you control your own list. You own your own list. If my friend had had all these 50,000 people on a list and he did not, he could have sent out an email or a text message that said, damn, I lost the group. I'm opening up a new group. And this time, I'm not going to call it the realtor referral. I'm going to call it the, the referral group for professional real estate, real estate professionals, you know, something without using the trademark. He didn't have that list. So he was out of luck out of luck. Use social media, capture the lead. Now, I'm a big fan of LinkedIn. I've done courses on LinkedIn. I'm the creator of a course called LinkedIn Dominance. I'll probably talk a lot about LinkedIn, all right? And if you want to know more about LinkedIn, let me know. Because LinkedIn is a great place for you to find leads. Because LinkedIn is all about business. It's all about B2B, business to business. And you are offering a business service. Your clients are businesses, so you are a B2B company. So you should be on LinkedIn, in my professional opinion, all right, and trying to, number one, make those connections, and number two, capturing that lead away from LinkedIn and following up with them away from LinkedIn. But LinkedIn does not work today like it did years ago. And 99% of the people that I meet are doing it wrong. They're trying to automate everything. It just doesn't work. So there are secrets to LinkedIn success. I will tell you this. It's a more difficult platform. It requires more personal interaction than most people want to give it. And I think that's why people look for shortcuts. And the shortcuts don't work and they don't have success with it. And they end up spending a lot of time and a lot of money trying to do a shortcut. Going back to my very first slide, they try to scale something before they've even made a successful process out of it. Make that successful process first and then figure out where you could shorten it. All right. We'll talk more about LinkedIn success later. I just want you to know I'm a strong believer in it. I think it's a great opportunity for you. LinkedIn is all about networking. I'm a big networker. When I, you know, next time you see me on, ca on camera, you'll see I've got some awards behind me on my bookcase. I've got a little Yoda that I was given from my BNI chapter for more referrals than anybody else. Guess what? It was my second month in the group. In my second month of the group, we had 50 people, 53 people in the group. In the second month, I had more referrals than anybody else. People are like, where did this guy come from? So I won that little Yoda. I got another certificate from another BNI group when I lived up near Dallas. Same thing, more referrals than anybody else. All right. So the thing about it is with any form of networking, you got to work it. Don't just go, don't just go show up. All right. But I love BNI, I love the Chamber of Commerce. There's others, you know, there might be Rotary. There might be, oh, you could even do this with your church. You could do this, any sort of association, any sort of organization, any sort of networking and a meetup event where people are brought together for the purpose of trying to do more business and bring more business for each other, not necessarily to each other. Okay. Now, one important thing about networking is you want to join a networking group where the majority of people are not going to be your customers. What? 
Why would you join a networking group where the majority of your people are not going to be your customers? Because we want those people to be referral partners for us. All right. I really, I don't care when I join a network group of 50 people, I don't care if I sell one person in that group, but I'd love them all to be my referral partners. Now, many times I might give somebody a complimentary access to my group, to, to my platform. Why? Because I want them to be a referral partner. I want them to say, I use this and it's great. That's why. All right. So networking success, join these groups, make sure you're joining groups that have strong potential referral partners for you. You don't want to join the groups that are just looking for customers, right? There we go. Now it was choosing the right groups. And there, be a go-giver. This is what I was talking about, where I earned, I earned the, uh, the rewards for more introductions, more referrals than anybody else in just my second month. You need to do that. You need to be active. If you're not going to be active, don't, don't waste the time there. All right. Uh, I still think somebody from your company should be there. So find somebody that will be active, somebody that will work it because they are a great source of referrals. And speaking of referrals, evangelist marketing. Now, if you're as old as I am, and you're probably not, but if you are, if you are around in the mid 80s, all right, with Apple, when Apple first introduced their Macintosh computer, and I had one. I had one in 1986. I had a Macintosh Plus. And it had, I, I spent an extra $1,000 and I doubled the RAM memory to a full megabyte. That's right. Uh, a Macintosh Plus computer had 512K was the RAM. And I doubled it to a, a full megabyte. That was huge. That was screaming fast. <laughs> right? I also I had this I had this big hard drive. It was an external hard drive. It sat on my desk and it was huge. It was a mammoth. And it was a whole... 20 megabytes. Think about it, 20 megabyte hard drive. All right. That's what computers were like in the mid 80s. All right. And, and guess what? One of the first programs I got, 1986, a CRM program, a CRM program. I started using a computer to control and in my sales territory, manage my sales in 1986. It was a whole lot different. But I, I've got a saying, by the way, my saying is that technology changes nothing and improves everything. Right. So my processes, they work. They worked in 1986 when I only had one megabyte of RAM and a little five inch black and white monitor. Five inch black and white monitor. Right. My processes still work. But technology, obviously, today, better, faster, cheaper. And that's what technology does. It speeds up those proven processes. But man, I'm sure glad I've got a proven process. All right. So what's this all have to do with evangelist marketing? I don't know if you know that guy in the in the sketch there, but his name is Guy. His name is Guy Kawasaki. And Guy Kawasaki was the original Apple evangelist. That was literally his title. His title was the chief evangelist of Apple. Now, Apple's success was based around these, eval these evangelists. They turned their users into their sales force. Because people loved Macintosh so much in the mid '80s that they told all their friends. So th this whole this whole concept of becoming an Apple evangelist it was it was how Apple, first of all, got on the map and competed against. The, IBM was so much bigger than a. I mean, IBM was the biggest. All right, and Apple, you know, couldn't hold a candle to IBM. All right, but because of the evangelists, word got around. And more and more people started buying apples. Now, remember, at this time, Apple only did computers. There's no iPhone. There's no iPod. There's nothing like that. Right? There's only the computers. But the evangelists grew it. And then Apple got into problems, by the way. Apple got into problems and almost went out of business in the, in the 90s, probably. And the, and the evangelists once again saved them. The evangelists once again ramped up support. In fact, if I remember correctly, back in those days, Bill Gates, head of Microsoft, once in, in, invested a relatively small amount of money, you know, maybe $10 million or something like that. Go, go Google the story. You'll find it. But he did that to keep Apple viable. See, Bill Gates was afraid that if Apple went out of business, that he would run into problems with the FTC, that he would run into problems for having a monopoly, that he would be too big, that he wouldn't have any competition, and he'd have problems from the government. And so it was cheaper 
for him to invest 10 million, it might have even been 100 million, but it's a small amount of money to, to Bill Gates, right? And to keep Apple alive and viable, but just barely alive and viable enough, right? not, too, not too much. Look at Apple today. Look what happened all because of that. And the roots are all from evangelists, people that went out and they spread the word of mouth. So get your testimonials. Turn your customers into your biggest raving fans. You want them to be your own evangelists. You want them to go screaming to their friends and their family, hey, you got to do business with this digital marketing agency. They are the best. That's what it's all about. And remember, built right into high level, you've got the ability to have an affiliate program. Or you could use a third-party one like First Promoter, all right? Whatever the case is. But do that. Build your own affiliate program so that you could actually compensate people to go out there and make referrals for you because referrals are the fastest way for you to grow. It's the cheapest way for you to grow because you don't have to pay up front and you're only pay paying when somebody makes a successful sale. Think about that. Now, there's a lot of people that will tell you all about paid advertising on Facebook and they'll tell you that's what you got to do. That's fine. That's fine. That's, that's what they do. That's their recommendation. And, I, and it obviously works. But I've had a lot of success with affiliate programs and referrals and paying people when they actually bring me a customer. That happens to be my choice. Doesn't mean it's the only choice. It's just my choice. All right. This obviously, obviously, I duplicated this slide and I left a couple of things there that don't belong there. So we'll forget about that. All right, folks. That's the end of my presentation. Let me let me stop sharing. Let me go live on camera here. All right, there we go. How do we do? How do we do? Did you enjoy that? Talking today about scaling your business? Do me a favor, in the chat. In the chat, I don't know, is it there? Is it there? Wherever the chat is, do me a favor. Tell me about your aha moments. Tell me what you liked. All right, tell me, what was it about scaling that stuck out in your mind? Let's see. See, I'll... I'll look here on the other monitor. I'll give you some. Ref I'll give you a, a review of certain things, right? So, number one, was it about? I know we talked about having your foundation in place, right? In fact, let me do this. Let me do this. We talked about. Hang on. Okay, having a strong foundation was the first thing we talked about. We talked about the importance of retention, minimizing churn, getting people to stay with us a long, long time. We talked about building your list and following up, all right? So of those three things, what were your aha moments? We talked about where to get fast and free traffic. Do you remember where we said to get fast and free traffic? What were the three letters we talked about? Three letters, fast and free traffic, O-P-T, right? O-P-T. And what does it mean? Put it in the chat box. Let me know if that was your aha moment. We talked about the power of referrals. We talked about the do's and don'ts of social media. What should you do when you meet somebody on social media? What's the first thing you should do on social media when you meet somebody? Hmm? And then we talked about networking. Oh, here it is. Here's my Yoda. There we go. There's my Yoda. Look, it says, what, BNI, BNI Circle of Trust. I won that for referrals at BNI. Same thing with this. Same thing with this, okay? These are from networking. These are from being a go-giver. These are from referrals. This award right there, okay? That's, that's a JV award for making referrals, all right? It's the fastest way to grow. Go give up front. Earn that reciprocity. All right, I'm Steve Rosenbaum. Today, we've talked about scaling your agency. Remember, each and every Tuesday, I will be here at 1 p.m. Pacific time. So what's that? That's uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Pacific. Every Tuesday, I'll be here and I'll be working with you, helping you get more clients. All right. Look forward to seeing you in the group, everybody. Thanks for being an Extendly customer, at least being a part of the group. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.